Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hi, this is Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're here with I Create Daily and the I Create Daily podcast. And this is our first podcast and our first artist guest. We're going to be interviewing artists and creatives of all type um, over many podcasts to come. And we're really excited that Ava Nikunin of Ava Nikunin Fantasy Art is our first guest because she's also a friend and a wonderful creative artist. Welcome, Ava. Oh, thanks for having me. Great to be here as your first guest. Yes, yes thank you. <laughs> Um, so we just wanted to know, so how do, how, first of all, how long have you been an independent artist and what inspired you to, to break out on your own? Yeah, to leave your job job and yeah, get Yeah, to leave the real job and do the art. Yeah, so uh, this October, uh, uh, it will be three years oh. um, uh, for me uh, as an independent artist, so... Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit of background. I'm a, I'm a graphic designer and I've always worked in uh, various fields of design, like visual merchandising, game design, um, uh, website design, everything. But um, about three years ago, I, um, at my last job, I was, um, uh, uh, I was feeling... I was feeling that I would really like to get back to art. And that's uh, kind of like how this whole thing started. Fantastic. Awesome. Did you start doing some part-time art, like freelance commission work before you took the plunge and quit your job yeah. altogether? A little bit. Um, uh, I, started, um, I started with just posting online. Uh, I hadn't really, I, I've always, uh, even though, uh, I was working in different jobs. I was always kind of like drawing for myself, but nothing serious. But yeah, about three years ago, I kind of felt that um, I really want to get back into art because that's like um, my my true passion and what I've always uh, really like. If someone asked me like what my dream job would be, it would be always like a fantasy artist. So. Um, I started just posting like on Instagram and just on my personal Facebook page and uh, nothing, nothing serious, but um, little by little I started uh, uh, getting like small commission jobs and stuff. So, and that kind of, uh, I don't know, gave him, gave him the courage that, okay, maybe, maybe I could do this thing. And uh, uh, I kind of uh, started, I had saved some some money and stuff, so I felt confident to kind of uh, do the, uh, take the leap to become an independent artist because I had tried, as I was working in my job, I had tried to uh, make art um, uh, at the same time, but I found it extremely hard to I'm sorry, just one Ava, one yeah. second. You bro broke up just a little bit. In your previous job, you had tried what? Oh, yeah. As I was working my previous job, I had tried to... Um, I wanted to make more art, and I found it really hard to um, start building uh, an art business as I was working a full-time job. And I know um, some, some people do that, but I just found it so so hard that I just decided to um, take the leap and just start doing it full time. What, um, first of all, that's awesome that you did that. And obviously it's one of those things that it's scary, but you're also glad you did it because you are now 
doing your own thing that you enjoy like you said waking up every day you're able to set your schedule and do your thing and create your world because you you don't just do fantasy art you're also building your own world and we'll get into that in a little while but what would you tell a creative person or artist who is at that place you were at three years ago where you're sort of weighing the benefit of doing the job thing versus going off and creating your own business, your own art, your own ideas? What, what advice, is there one piece of advice that you could sum up for that person who's, who's on the fence? Um, yeah, I just, um, I think uh, the number one thing that I would ask is that, uh, would you be doing art if nobody paid you anything? I think that's kind of like a good, good way to start because, um, uh, as as you know, like having your own business, it's it's a lot of work. I work um, twice as much now as I uh, than I did that at my last job. So, <laughs> and um, every moment uh, when you're working for yourself, you really have to. Um, you have to be your own own boss. You have to. You're also your own employee. So it's kind of like you're doing the art, by, but you have to also manage yourself and and really be um, on top of things all the time. So it's a lot of hard work. But I think uh, I think the number one thing is that if you truly love what you're doing, you can you can make it work. So um, absolutely, yeah. So you started, um, like a lot of times people will say, before you leave your job, make sure that your passion project or your new endeavor has replaced your job salary. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like yours hadn't yet, but you took the leap anyway. Is that correct? Yes, I had some savings and stuff. So uh, uh, that that helped a little bit, but still it was a... um, it was a scary decision, but still, I don't regret it at all. And um, I just, uh, I kind of knew, knew that I, I could do it. I kind of trusted myself because at that moment when I, when I decided to do it, I was, um, uh, I, I kind of felt that I didn't have any other option. Like, I, I just, like, I have to start now. And I'm really glad I did because uh, if I hadn't done that, I might still be at that same job, just mm-hmm. wondering. And now would be, I had been at that job for four years before I decided to leave. And now like, it would be like seven years, I would still be in that same job, like nothing would have changed. Yeah, that's so that's a, that's a scary thought <laughs> to me. So. Yeah. Well, and that's- even though it's, yeah, it's been a kind of like a crazy experience. Like I've only done this, I think like three years sounds long, but it's really not that long when you think about it really. So yeah, I'm, I kind of still feel like I'm at the beginning of, of the journey, but I'm still further along than I was three years ago, which is good. <laughs> right, right. That's fantastic. So that was how you got started. And what was it that, what is it that sustains you uh, when it is that the going gets tough? You know, have you had, like, it's not, like you're working twice as hard, like you've said, and we understand that definitely. We also understand that, you know, every effort you make right now, that working twice as hard is building your own business, your own brand, your mm-hmm. own platform, your own entity, you know, branded around you and your art, as opposed to work, doing it for somebody else. Yeah once in the beginning therefore is the hardest naturally because construction is hard Mm -hmm. and it takes a long time to get it to the place that it can sustain us where we can live in the house that we're building you know where where it can take care of us rather than us just taking care of it so in the meantime have you had really tough moments where you felt like giving up and if so then what kept you going in spite of it uh yeah definitely there are tough moments and um I think, uh, well, kind of like what I said earlier is that if if it's truly your passion, then you will find a way and um, also um, kind of maybe taking a moment and thinking about like uh, how far you've come already 
like with with your journey although it kind of might feel that <laughs> you're not going anywhere and it's kind of um things are tough at the moment but um maybe at that moment it would be good to just uh um give yourself a moment to see like how you, how you've grown as you you're working towards your goal and also um what gives me um inspiration is thinking that uh as i'm building this thing like uh, as the the years go by and hopefully um it will grow and um and in the end i will have my own thing like my my own world that i've built and uh, it will give me freedom to work from anywhere i want and i'm not um Uh, I don't have to sit in a little box somewhere in front of a keyboard working for someone else. So that's a huge thing. I, I don't think, uh, like doing this three years now, I don't think I could go and work for someone else anymore. That's yeah. Kind of like also uh, yeah. what I've been thinking. It's like, it's a, it's not a possibility for me to quit now and start looking for a job. Uh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Definitely. You have done a lot, especially this year, I think you have done a lot of conferences, um, like conventions and shows. Um, could you just rattle off, for instance, this year, all the ones you have done or will do, where you set up a booth and are selling your art? Yeah, so, okay, I'm located in in Europe, in Finland. So um, the, uh, the conventions here are, are a little bit different than in the U.S., uh, you have um so much uh like so many so much more of those kind of events which i'm a little bit jealous of but i work with what i have and um uh, yeah but still this year has been pretty good i um uh, i go to all the conventions that i can uh that are located uh in cities that i can get to and um this year which was good uh we had a big convention called the uh, Worldcon, which is an international science fiction convention that it's usually in the United States, but this year it was in Finland, which was good. And uh, those are also, they're great opportunities to meet people. And uh, that's, that's one thing, like, uh, I think most of us are building our brands online, but it's also a good thing to uh, go and meet people face to face When you can, yeah. you get a lot of great feedback, and you, uh, for me, it helps to figure out like what my target audience is and uh, what my customers look like and uh, what they, what their interests are, and just talking to them, it's really helpful for the business as well. Right. That's a great point. So, so what have you, um, of what other conferences or conventions have you exhibited? Um, the, well, this year, uh, well, we have um, a big uh, science fiction fantasy convention here in Finland every year. So uh, that's uh, in, in July. I always go to that and I have a booth and I sell prints and uh, my, This year I had my coloring book. I was selling that. And um, um, yeah, in the beginning, beginning sorry. sorry to interrupt, but if you'll tell the name of the event, then that way people who might be interested in going will know to look for you there as well. And we can include that in the notes. Yeah, so it's called Rofecon. It's a role-playing game uh, convention here, here in Finland. Rofecon, okay. Yeah. Okay, Seropicon so and Worldcon. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Any others that you want to mention? Uh, I did, uh, at the beginning, beginning of the year, I did a few arts and crafts shows in here, here in Finland. But I, I noticed that uh, those aren't uh, as good for, uh, for my business as the, the fantasy and science fiction conventions because the... Uh, the people who go to arts and crafts fairs maybe aren't really that interested in the, the fantasy genre. So that, that's also been a, a learning curve. Like this year, I will not maybe do those as much anymore. I will focus on 
more on the online business and the, the fantasy conventions. Yeah, well, that's good to know because you basically tried them all and you've given, you know, mm-hmm. to make, and it makes sense. So do you think that next year you will do the smaller fairs or festivals or will you save all your energy and resources for the larger ones? Uh, yeah, uh, I, um, I've tried, I've tried a few of the, the arts and crafts shows and uh, uh, what I learned like from, from last year and the beginning of this year, I know like what shows uh, maybe I should not do. And I will, next year I will focus on, on, the, on the bigger conventions and especially like the fantasy themed conventions because I do fantasy themed art. So that's kind of where my target audience goes. And yeah, it's kind of, it's all a learning process when you go to shows. Sometimes you have a good show, sometimes not so good, but you also learn from those. And uh, uh, if you're doing like mistakes, you know, you're at least trying and testing new things and uh, new areas. So you always learn stuff. Definitely. Yeah, definitely good to rule out. So you have a website where you sell your work. Um, you also have a Redbubble store um, and you also have an email list and your emails are wonderful and pretty steady and reliable. Um, and there, it's always like a treat to actually get, you know, your email in the inbox because it always has something beautiful in it and just you know a short couple paragraphs of things um so definitely we'll include your website and hopefully people will join your email list so they can keep track and follow you and what you're doing um are you actually selling anything have you sold anything through your email list um (coughs) excuse me have you is that one of your so like you're selling online so of your online resources what has been your best monetization method um, well, my best, um, where, where I do most of my advertising is, is on Instagram and Facebook. And I've, I've seen uh, Twitter has picked up um, for me in the last few months. I've kind of figured out like how to use it. And uh, uh, you kind of have to just start using those and as you're, um, and you kind of figure out like, how to kind of like talk to people through different, because Facebook is different from Twitter and from Instagram. Kind of figure out as you're doing it, like what you should post and what maybe not post on other social medias and stuff. So yeah, those are big ones. And um, uh, I, uh, I do, I do uh, boost posts on Facebook. So I do paid advertising on Facebook. I haven't tried, I've done some on Instagram, but haven't really, I've really done that so much so only on Facebook and then I have my email list which actually at the moment I'm uh, trying to grow the email list I'm um, actually just uh, this month I'm um, doing a weekly giveaway to to everyone on my email list um, a new like a um, coloring page every week for everyone who's on my email list so nice. everyone will get that and uh, I already, I just posted about it a, a couple of times and I already have new people sign up. So that's a good method because uh, people like exclusive stuff. And, uh, yeah, definitely. That's a great, a great idea. Yeah. Uh, before um, we move on, I just wanted to touch on one subject you mentioned earlier. Um, so last year you created the uh, the coloring book and you had a whole Kickstarter campaign and this year you're working on a creative book a uh, creative journal which is sort of like a coloring book and then also the journal aspect and you mentioned earlier in the interview about being sort of like you own your business but you're also sort of self-employed for a while as your own employee and in terms of what you learned last year through everything you created and what you've been doing this year, what are um, maybe two or three of your daily habits that you implement to, um, because we know you create art every day, so what are the things, sort of the positive habits you put in place to make sure that you're always showing up to do that? Yeah, so my biggest thing is that um, I do, I have a very strict uh, schedule which has a lot for when you're working yourself. 
And uh, uh, the biggest thing for me is uh, every day, like the first four hours, uh, I paint or draw. So um, because just a, second, uh, just a second, Ava, our connection's a little rough, unstable, and I don't want to miss because this is a very important part. I'm glad you remembered to ask this question. So let's try again. Uh, so every, you have a very strict schedule, and then every yeah. day you. Yeah. So um, uh, every day I. I start every day with art, so I have a, um, a four four hour um, time um, in the morning where I only paint or draw, and uh, that's what I do every day. And uh, because that's the, my my brain is the the more most uh, like uh, creative in the morning when I'm still um, uh, like. Uh, everything is fresh in the morning. I just, I, I just love mornings and that's mornings and that's the best time to, to do creative stuff for me. And then after like lunch, 1 PM, I kind of, uh, I might still do some art, but it's, uh, I'm not so focused anymore. So I kind of uh, try to use that time for uh, marketing, like doing my emails or, uh, editing YouTube videos or stuff like that. So that's uh, that's my my um, creative schedule, and it really helps. Awesome. Do you get back to some drawing in the evenings? I know we've t spoken with you a few times when you were working on drawing something or painting. Yeah, I, I might. But I usually try to um, like um, in the afternoon. I try to do. Uh, marketing stuff but that usually doesn't take like the whole evening so if i have some like quote unquote free time which is not really free time but if i have and i if i still have the energy i will do some art even in the evenings but usually um this is kind of like actually something i picked up from a book called uh the one thing uh it's um uh, in the book, they talked about like um, if you want to create something, achieve something, you have to have a, a four-hour uh, time slot to do that, and don't have any um, uh, don't let anyone disturb you. Like that's the time that you're like super focused on what you're doing, and that's kind of what I've used. So the four hours for me is like I try not to check Facebook or Instagram or anything. I just uh, I just focus on the most important thing which for me is to create the art because that's like the basis of my whole business so that has to be uh like uh really yeah, good <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah I think that's excellent i know stephen pressfield has that habit of blocking out four hour times in the morning and writing for four hours and he said pretty much after that he's not as much good for writing and creating but he's um, got that bulk and you you've got that bulk amount of time your best freshest work created yeah, yeah that, that's so important and we've found the same thing it's i'm not as yet as structured as i'd like to be in that regard and so hearing that from you meaning that for me um that's where when i want to most create but i tend to also want to serve our communities we run several facebook pages and groups and um as well as the emails or customers or whatever and so i find that if i start there that it derails me because uh and it always almost always takes more time than i expect mm -hmm. um and so really what i need to do is flip that and i when i do start the morning as you described it's so much more productive it's amazing whereas in the afternoons it's easier to do the interaction because interacting with people kind of lifts you up as well um and you know it engages you so so that then you don't have to necessarily have the um creative you know power uh thing going on um but you can interact and like you said do the emails and such so that's a good reminder yeah so anything else before, anything else that you would like to say, what would be your parting thought for artists who are either considering getting started uh, and or already are in it, but you know, they're in the, the thick of it and not yet on, the, on, the, on their horizon where they wanna go. So any advice for artists um, who are looking to succeed in their art? Um, well, just, uh, 
I don't know, focus on, if you're doing art, focus on uh, the thing that you love most is that um, try not to think about like maybe what, what would sell, like what would people want to buy, but uh, you have to be your first uh, customer. You have to be your own number one fan. So that's kind of like what I'm always trying to think about, like, would I have this on my wall? Like, art? like would I want this? And um, uh, it's uh, surprisingly hard to kind of, um, because uh, as a creator, you have, uh, you have your own goals, like what you would like your art to look like. And because you're constantly growing as an artist, you know, your skills um, improve, uh, but uh, at the same time, um, you have to be also happy, uh, like where, where you are at the moment. But yeah, just, uh, yeah, maybe that you just uh, be your own number one fan because uh, if, if you're excited about what you're doing, I'm sure that other people will get excited as well. That's a great point. Yeah, enthusiasm spreads and it adds confidence mm -hmm. to what it is you're creating. Um, so yeah, that's wonderful. And that's why you started in the first place, you know? That's why most of us start in the first place because we want to make that thing that we've been seeking to find and and then that journey of making it really creates that experience yeah do you um because no one else can and no and you do you like you know as best as you can so that makes a lot of sense well thank you so much for joining us for this podcast we're really yeah. excited to share your story and um and let and because i know it will inspire many people as it has inspired us and make sure to check out Ava's website, avanekunen.com. We'll have it in the show notes. And, and all her social media is there and her email list. Yeah, definitely. Her awesome email list. Yeah. And sorry if for those who are just listening on the podcast, the sound was not ideal all of the time. Some of the time, Ava, your sound was a little bit off. I'm not sure if ours was to you. And I, I don't know okay. if it, it's our connection. It could well be or it could be that you're over in Finland. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Um, but this is, but we still got wonderful gems from you and inspiration. In fact, some, some definitely memeable quotes from you as well. Um, so yeah, so this is wonderful. And thanks so much for sharing your story. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. <laughs>